there's a lot of the military life as the uh, Air Force uh, person. I did. I did. I, I, I enjoyed getting to travel around. And I tell you, my, my young wife uh, really enjoyed traveling around, too. She she loves Liesl, but she loved traveling. And so when uh, when we got to Europe, she saw that I was going to be very busy in Germany. And she, she took our children and threw them in a, in a minivan and drove all over Europe. How, how long have you been so retired? I, I retired in 2006. And uh, my last duty assignment was actually up in Virginia, but we chose to come back to the Bossier area initially because that's where our daughters had started school. Okay. And uh, they, they finished school in Benton up there. And when that got over, I told Carolyn in 2014, I said, I'm homesick. I've been homesick for 28 years, so we came back here in, in uh, 2014 to Leesville. Uh, our guest this morning is Chuck Owen, Catholic State Representative, District 30. Uh, Chuck, you're, you're a very fortunate person. Your daughter uh, went to grad school working in Louisiana. Uh, yes, that your second daughter will also stay in Louisiana. 50,000 people left the state last year. Mm. That's, that's not good numbers. It, it, it is not, Ted. And I, I, I listen to Moon with Vaughn, and you talk about this all the time, about uh, out-migration problem in Louisiana. And, it, and it's just awful. And we, we do it to ourselves. You know, we, we, we have what I think are, are confiscatory tax rates and their tax rates and, 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 and tax structures in the wrong place that run businesses off and they run people off. Um, we, we, have, we have terrible infrastructure. We have so many things around Louisiana that spook people out. And, and it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, we don't have to be this way. And it's, and it's just frustrating when businesses, first of all, don't come here. And then when we have businesses that are here, they pick up and run off like we're hearing these things down in, you know, that, that are going on in South Louisiana. And God forbid they happen up here because we can't take that. Well, I'll give you a great example. We had the cable system at Fort Polk. That we'll forget about the third month we had the cable system. I was in the office and there was a line of military people outside the door waiting to pay their bill. And I threw a temper tantrum. I said, this is America's greatest. Why are they waiting in line? Get extra people up here and take their payment. Well, let me take that to today. Uh, today, one of the great Americans serving at Fort Polk decides to go down locally and buy an automobile. And let's say he's from Virginia or wherever, Texas, and he buys a $40,000 automobile, and then he gets a sticker shock. This $4,000 of state and local taxes, 10%, the highest in the nation. Our military, and quite frankly, our uh, residents, deserve better than that than the highest tax rate in the nation in Louisiana. You know, but they really do. And I think we would feel, I don't think you'd ever feel, you'd ever feel really good about taxes, but I think we would feel less bad if we got more for our tax money. You know, if, if we were driving around on roads that didn't seem like they were the Oregon Trail and are tearing our cars and our tires up and we were paying taxes, you might go, you know, okay, that's good. Or, or, or all of our schools were brand new and clean and class sizes were small and all that stuff. We'd go, well, okay, at least I'm getting a lot for my tax dollars. We don't feel that way here. We just feel like, where's it going? Well, I'll, so give, I, you, I'll give you, you a great theory. example. I'll give you a great example. 6% of the budget goes to uh, roads and bridges. 6%. Oh, uh, there's no way we could ever repair things. And, uh, you know, let's put blame where blame's due. Uh, you got to blame the people that's been serving in office. I, I don't get to vote on that. You haven't got to vote on that. Uh, the people that's making decisions, God bless them, they may have made the best decision they're capable of making, but apparently they made really bad decisions. So yeah. here's, my, here's my question to you, Chuck. As a freshman legislator, you'll be one voice. How do you make that difference? Well, you go down there with a clear mind, and you go down there looking to, to team with other people who are like-minded. Um, and, you know, I, I heard Newt Gingrich say this one time, and I don't know if it's good or bad to repeat it, but he said, you can always count on me to, uh, to cooperate but I will not compromise what's important. And, you know, we, we have a handful of legislators down there who don't compromise on what's important, you know. One of them is a good friend of yours, Sheriff uh, Frankie Howard, or I guess they represent Frankie Howard. I mean, he, he holds the line on taxes. He always has held the line on taxes. Well, look he, at he that. Does, he does for his constituents what he says he's going to do, and that's what I'm going to do. I, I am, I am going to support the values of the people of Vernon and Beauregard, and I'm not going to waver... And I'm not going to compromise. Well, look at Jack McFarlane up in Winfield, another great American. Lance oh, Fair yeah. is hopefully going to be the next speaker. 
a great American. But I'll tell you what, the problem gets over there in the Senate, and uh, hopefully Jeff Landry is going to be successful in helping uh, conservative senators get in office. But uh, we've got to turn this ship around or else we're in trouble. Hey, if people want to get involved in your campaign, how can they do it? you got a website set up, or have you got to that point yet? I, I do. I do. My website is conservativechuckowen.com. One long word, conservative Chuck Owen. There are actually a lot of Chuck Owens in the world out there. Um, so that's where my website is. That'll, that'll tell folks a little bit about about me and uh, you know give you a chance to participate. And we're, uh, we're we're kind of in the formative stages on that. So uh, you know, we're like, as, as as I said, I'm I'm a planner and I'm in the early stages of planning right now. I'm meeting people and getting these types of things lined up. Uh, how did your wife feel about you running for this position? You know, my wife uh, is a wonderful teammate we we are we are teammates in this house and uh in, in, anything i've wanted to do she has she has been behind me um so so she's with me she's my partner um she's actually very much the brains of the outfit um so we're we're, we're in this together okay here's my question there's going to be different kinds of people supporting chuck owen there's going to be people that's going to write a check and say chuck i believe in what you're doing i want to give you five dollars fifty dollars a hundred dollars there's going to be people that say, Chuck Owens, I believe in what you're doing. I don't have any money. Can I put up a campaign sign? Or can I give out brochures? Is there room for everybody in your campaign? A absolutely. You know what Carol and I are telling people now? They're, they're stopping there asking and say, how's it going? What can we do for you? First thing we say is pray for us. Because, you know, I, we want to do the right, the right thing. We want Louisiana, you know, to be right. And I believe God's will is what is most important here. And so that's the first thing out of our mouth is pray for us. And then over time, when signs are there and we have, you know, uh, rallies or meetings like that where people can come and we can visit, you know, I will, I will be disseminating on that. I am very prolific on Facebook, so I'm, I'm very active there, both uh, on my personal side and I'm, I'm getting a campaign side up. So there's, there's room for everybody because Louisiana is a great place and, you know, there, there's room for everybody in Louisiana. With 50,000 people moving out, what can we do to get more of those great Americans that... Uh, have served their duty at uh, the U.S. Uh, military Army. They're ready to retire. They're at Fort Polk. What can we do to get it more uh, inducive for them to stay in Vernon Parish or Sabine Parish or Borgward Parish? Well, I, I think structurally as a state, we need to do more things to, you know, to uh, entice businesses to, as, as I said, to stay here and or to come here. Um, our, our mayor down here has done a good job in Leesville. You know, getting this mobile home manufacturer in, the mayor and the police through the city council, they've done a good job of that. Real proud of them. But we need more of that. For whatever reason, Leesville has struggled to get industry to, to come and to stay here. They've done a good job at DeRitter. You know, I was down there visiting with some friends the other day, and they're, you know, you know DeRitter's in good shape. They need to be able to hold what they've got and expand. But we need to expand it. Well, we've got lots of space here that we can, you know, that, that we can build things on. Um, you know, we, we, we have people that want to work, so, you know, the state needs to structurally provide incentives that are consistent across the board where people can come and say, yeah, I want to invest in Louisiana. I want to come live in this, you know, in this, in this community where, I, you know, where, I, where I'll, I'll feel safe and be able to raise my family. Uh, generally, tell me where all your uh, district includes. My district is a little peculiar to me as, I've, as I have uh, researched it. It is basically the middle of Leesville all of Leesville proper runs straight down 171 into uh, into DeRitter and covers about half of DeRitter um, and it's odd down in Rose Pine half of Rose Pine is in uh, my district and half is in another district it's a, there are about 45,000 uh, uh, citizens 20,000 households about 15,000 registered voters in this district that sounds like a lot of gerrymandering the way you describe it before you describe that district. You know, I don't, I don't understand it. I've, I've, I've been having some phone calls and some discussions with folks about how this got there. And they say, it, I'm told it, it's driven by the census, and you can only have X number of people represented by a, a representative. But, you know, when I was growing up, Vernon had a representative. Beauregard had one. Uh, you know, and it just it doesn't make sense to me because although we are, you know, you know, Lisa and Durango are in a lot of ways sister cities. In a lot of ways, we're competitor cities because we, you know, we compete for the, you know, the the, the folks living in in, uh, in Fort Polk. But really, we ought not to be represented by the same guy because uh, you know we we don't have as much in common as 
Weasel does with the rest of Vernon Parish because we have the same school system, the same police jury up here, and, and really we ought to be under one rubric. And I, you know, I, I would like to see that happen next time no, uh, but, you know, when the census comes out. Uh, maybe your dad deserves credit for this, but uh, Vernon Parish has one of the better school systems in the state of Louisiana. But answer this for me, Chuck, uh, and this should be a question you get when you're running for state representative. Why do I tell my uh, daughter or son a good reason to stay in Louisiana when we're highest uh, insurance rates in the nation, the 48th uh, worst state in the nation in education, living conditions here is one of the worst, everything that's good we're uh, last in, everything that's bad we're first in, so why should my child or your child stay in Louisiana? You know, I'm going to go back to what you first said about uh, the school system here. And, and my dad uh, was a, a pillar in the community, and, but there have been decades and decades since he's left of hardworking administrators and teachers and contributing parents that have kept the school system in Vernon good. I mean, they have. There have been a litany of wonderful superintendents and elected school board members and people who have just given of themselves, you know, to make this place a, a good place to live. So, you know, there's, yeah, my dad did a lot so much a long time ago, but these people have, have continued to work hard, and we are so proud of our schools. And they got great schools in Beauregard, too. Uh, you know, a lot of A and B schools in these districts. But as far as why to stay, you know, Ted, I, I'm, I am, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a simpleton. I was an old ball player, and I, when, I, when I was a junior in high school, we, we had a 2-8 and eight football team, and we were terrible. And uh, a lot of guys wanted to quit. And my best friends did not quit. And we all got together and decided we started this thing, we're going to finish it together because it's worth it. And that's the way I feel about Leesville and about Louisiana and about our country, is that this place is worth living in. Let's work together. Let's make it better. It can be done. Right, Chuck, um, now, give us some time because it's going to take some time, but it can be done. I I'm out of time, but I really enjoyed this conversation. Can I get you back another day? Anytime you want. I am, I, am, I am available all the time. Hey, Chuck, thanks so much for sharing time with us. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good day. Uh, Chuck Owen, a candidate for uh, State Representative District 30. And uh, I want to remind you, today is a uh, $5 day at Cinema, Acadiana Cinema in Natchitoches, all day long for any movie. $5 day. How can it get better than that? Uh, we're going to take a quick message. Be right back. Care Center is a charming, warm, and long-established health care facility located in Leesville at 8422 Kirkwood Road. The Woodlands is a locally owned and operated 152-bed facility offering skilled care to Medicare, Medicaid, private pay, and private insurance patients. We offer many services to our patients from 24-hour children.